Okay, everyone, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Uh, I'm Zarathustra, and today is April 2nd, and I'm broadcasting from Los Angeles. Um, nice to have you all back. Uh, feels good to be together. Um, it's been really beautiful here. I have to say it's been very vibrant and green and good weather and almost perfect weather. It's not hot, it's not cold, it's crisp in the mornings. So I, I think it's my first time in six years that I'm here in Los Angeles during the spring. So it's really nice to experience this. And uh, last week was the Persian New Year. So I, I got to celebrate it with my family for the first time after six years. So it's, it's all good. Um, I'm happy we're connecting here. Uh, I'm making a little bit change again to the academy. So we changed the time of the academy to 75 minutes because uh, a number of you were asking me about so what about the meditation. So I incorporated the, the silent meditation back into the academy again. So let's just do our meditation first. And then after our meditation, we will um, talk and you can, if you have any questions, like always raise your hand and I'll answer your question and then uh, we'll go, move on from there. Uh, for those of you who are with me for the first time, just keep in mind that because the device is making funny noises, so we have to mute you at this point and then, uh, Whenever you, you want to connect with me, either write on the chat box or uh, raise your hand, um, and then I'll I'm unmute you and you can talk to me directly. Um, okay, so, so we'll go from here. Um, let's just, we're gonna do a simple meditation. And meditation can really be very easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, it could be complicated, it could be more advanced. Uh, we do have active meditations that we have created and we've done it together. And uh, we can do a very simple meditation by basically sinking into ourselves. Sinking back into yourself means that you bring your attention from focused on the world outside of you, including your thoughts or your emotions or your body, they're still outside of yourself. So you take your attention from the whatever the mind goes to on the outside and you divert it within and you bring your attention on the observer part of you, the one that is observing, the one, the part of you that hears things, not what you're hearing and not what you're observing. So you just switch your attention and bring it, you put your focus on the one who is inside you, the one who's hearing my words right now. And immediately everything becomes quiet. Almost immediately, everything disappears. So let's do that. You can either close your eyes or if you feel like you need to keep your eyes open, uh, do it. It's easier to close your eyes and just sink inside yourself. And keep your attention on one point inside. And you don't need to force yourself to do a mantra or any kind of manipulation. Just simply bring your attention to one point within yourself. And just stay there. And breathe into it.
Just relax into it. Don't get engaged with trying to make yourself think or not think. Don't get engaged with that. Simply stay in your center. Simply stay in your center and allow the presence to take over. You're simply hanging out in this moment. You're simply at the presence of your own self, the holy self.
Slowly, slowly come back. Okay, so a daily uh, meditation routine is really very, very helpful to get us centered. And right off the bat, uh, when you begin your day, it gives you a chance to just sink in and reconnect with yourself reconnect with the place that the real you is residing in the real you which is a master which is the buddha it's in the center of yourself is in your center and the real you is the one who is the source of your existence it's the source of your thoughts or your emotions it's the observer the seer the one that sees things the one that hears things the one that things get measured in you you're measuring things all your ups and downs gets measured to this part of yourself so the real one is just here, like sitting like this. And it's not moving. There's no movements with the real you. So, and when we take our time, if you get in a t into a routine, uh, like a lot of people like to wake up in the morning and take 15 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes to meditate. And that meditation that you do, it centers you and puts you back in alignment with yourself. And as you get more skilled, then you begin to develop this understanding that your movements throughout the day, whatever you do, you it comes from that place. So you can operate from that centeredness during the day rather than operating from a place of the mind because the mind is always in chaos and is in worries and, and all kinds of anxiety gets involved with the story of life but your center is not involved with the story of life. Your center is calm and quiet and collected. So there's a big difference when we're living our lives and operating from the chaos, the mind, reactions. We're being reactionary, emotional about things, or when you operate from your center and it's a two a world difference in between the two and you can see how life is going to be responding to you whether if you're operating from chaos or you're operating from being centered and you're you're operating from a place that you're really centered then the reaction of life is different to you you get a different reaction things don't bother you and upset you 
or if something really drastic happens and you're staying in your center, very quickly this thing will evaporate. It will just dissolve. It will lose its uh, intensity. Something that before was really upsetting you, it would be a big deal, but you're staying in your center and you're operating from this place. Now that thing that really blows up, no matter how intense it is, you're just indifferent to it. You're staying, you're the master. And then all of a sudden, this huge thing crumbles down and disappears. It's like nothing. So, but that shift, you have to work on it on yourself because of years of being conditioned to react to things and to take things very seriously, taking them for their face value and reacting to them, going into fear, anxiety, worry. Now you have to change it. And in the beginning, the mind is telling you, what are you doing? What are you doing? If you don't panic about this, nothing's going to happen. But actually, it's, the way is the opposite. It's like the more you stay calm and quiet, the quicker things are going to dissolve and work out. But initially, you have to make that jump. And, and trust that this is the way. So you have to kind of prove it to yourself. You have to prove it to yourself by not, not reacting to, to it. So let's say that in this non-reactionary way and this way of being, again, I'm not saying that there won't be any um, movement or there won't be any kind of reactions at all it's not like you're sitting here like this all day long and you're not doing anything no you still move you still do things and you still react to things but your reaction is coming from a complete different place now let's say now that we're talking about this it's a good subject to talk about because majority of people on the planet is very much involved with the story. The story, whatever is the story, whether it's the story of your life or the story of the world, whether you're involved with the, you're very much concerned about the politics and what's going on, the politics in the U.S., if you live in the U.S. or if you're living in another country and you're very much involved with world economy, um, whatever, whatever that really tickles your fancy and grabs your attention and gets you very excited, uh, whether it's a religious movement, if it's a race, um, nationality, you're really passionate about your nationality, whatever it is, whatever is your story, what really moves you. And something happens and emotion, really strong emotion comes up for you. And all of a sudden you're feeling very angry or all of a sudden you feel anxiety or you really afraid or all of a sudden something happened and you feel extreme jealousy and something rises in you and we have spoken about i shared with those of you who've been with me of how to stay in this place of the observer and observe it and not be attached or get involved feel what you're feeling and you acknowledge the presence of the emotion. You know, you feel you get up in the morning and something happens, you get some news and you feel depressed and you feel a lot of fear and you simply stay with it 
and you acknowledge its presence of a strong emotion rising within you. Okay, so we've talked about that, and those of you who've been with me, you heard me uh, sharing with you how you look at it. But now let's go even a little bit, look at a different angle of this, like this emotions are rising for you. And you get very passionate about it. So let's say that you are a kind of person that are dealing with depressions. All of a sudden you feel depressed. I'm just going to use this one, maybe depressed and anxiety. You get these anxieties coming. Now, what you want to do also is when all of a sudden this anxiety is coming for you and you've been suffering from it, and you also want to look at it to see where is this coming from. You want to kind of trace it. Again, let me make one, one thing clear because um, I'm not teaching or sharing with you how to repress an emotion or even how to get involved with it, to go to your past, to try to solve this emotion and and work it this is not what i teach okay and there's many many different schools of in spirituality and and psychotherapy that they take you back into your past and you deal with an emotional issue whatever that is you know you've been abused you've been um you have you had abusive parents or something has happened to you sexually, or blah, 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 whatever the story is. That's not what I teach, and that's not what I share. I don't work with that. What I'm referring to is that simple observation, a full level of awareness of going back into this place of simply being aware being aware of something rising inside you and something happened, somebody said something to you and it insulted a prejudice you have, whatever that is. It insulted your belief system. You're believing in whatever. You're believing in Christ. You're coming from a strong Christian background and Christ is your savior, and that's the only way to go. Or you're coming from another religious background, um, whether it's Islamic or not, whatever that is. Um, you've been studying Buddhism, and you have a very strong affinity about Buddhism. And if somebody is talking anything bad about it, it really makes you upset. Or um, you believe in women's rights and uh, uh, liberation, or you're very much into preserving the planet, the, um, the forest, or the animals, animal rights, and you're very passionate about it. And somebody says something or disagrees with what you say or being ignorant to these, your ideas and your belief system and really triggers you, and it makes you very upset or angry. So, we'll come back to this, is you want to implement and start, begin to discipline yourself. Learning and implementing this to observe this emotion that arises inside you. Even if some, something has been directed to you directly, you know, if, as bad as, you know, racism or a direct insult to, to you 
as, as who you believe you are. Somebody has insulted you directly and, and they're being assholes or racist or whatever they're being, you know? Whatever is the story, they're insulting you directly, okay? And what you want to do is you want to use this opportunity and break the circle, the cycle that we've been in for thousands of years of what happens is the anger comes out and we have to defend ourselves or we have to react to it by maybe aggression or, or um, some kind of reaction that will come out of us. And that's very natural for all of us, regardless of what kind of background we're coming from. Uh, we all have these trigger points that's been implemented in our psyche and it's our conditioning. It's the conditioning of the mind. But if you learn how to come back to your center of who you are and recognize who you are, and the more you start to see who you are, you, you begin to realize that you really don't have a form, you don't have a nationality, you don't have a religion, you don't have a race, you don't, you're not a man or a woman, you are just a being. And you're here and this being of yours is really cannot be touched regardless of what anybody says or do or what they do to your physical body who you are cannot be touched it's beyond that it's beyond being insulted it's beyond being repressed it's beyond any sort of limitation it's beyond all of it and to really stay in this place and to re reconnect and connect with it till you get really established within yourself. And realizing in this getting establishment within yourself to realize that you are really in penetrable, you cannot be touched, you cannot be scratched, you cannot be destroyed, nothing can happen to you, you're beyond that. But to go to this place to recognize that, so it's not a mental process or another belief system because we don't want to go into another belief system, we've done that and that doesn't work is that you have to recognize it within yourself of the truth of who you are. And sometimes maybe it's difficult to recognize the truth of who you are. And sometimes maybe it's easier to recognize who you are not. And I'm just simply making suggestions to you and you take the way you like to take and what works for you and as i recommend you try different ways but this is only pointing out the direction is which direction is going to take you back into freedom because freedom is really what we're looking for we have been slaves for thousands of years and we're still in slavery because we're slaves of our minds. We believe our thoughts and our emotions are real. Therefore, they could be manipulated all the time. And because of that, when we don't get what we want, we suffer. So as long as we suffer, we're slaves because we're suffering from the world of thoughts and emotions. And when the unwanted emotions rise in us, we identify with it and we believe that we're the emotion, whatever that is. So we go up and down and up and down, ups, up, all this up and down. 
So we're not free. Freedom is when you start to realize you're not any of these things and you're infinite. But you really feel that. You're just not saying it. It's not blah, blah, blah. It's not something you've read in a book or you heard someone else is speaking it. You really have come to this understanding on your own. So let's look at the things that pull you down into slavery, to pull you down into this place of suffering. What brings us to it? So a part of that is what we do is we're going to just look of the things that really trigger you, you know, whatever that is, okay? The stuff that triggers you. And you just look at it. What really just drives you crazy and, and brings this strong emotion out of you? It could be a behavior that your mom or your dad has or your partner, or, or your children, um, whatever. You are the only one who's going to recognize that. We all have it. So what we want to do is we want to turn the uh, poison into medicine. Always using a disadvantaged situation into your advantage by turning the poison into the medicine. And the way we do turn the poison into medicine is very simple, is A, we learn that we see the emotion comes out of us and it's gonna, and we acknowledge it. We acknowledge the emotion that we're not that emotion, but we're simply observing it. Okay, we learned that. Now, you want to see that this emotion rises in you and the source of it, it's rising in you and it's been happening to you for uh, most of your life. So now we're just going to look at it from where it's coming from. So if you start to identify its source, then what happens is you get into this habit of catching it, seeing it where it's coming from. Something happened, somebody said something, and it triggered you. And now this emotion is rising inside you. Not the story that they're wrong, you know. Somebody has insulted you, and so we go into the story that this person has been an asshole to me and they're wrong and, and we have all the rights to be angry and upset. We, okay, I'm not talking about that. Of course, you have the right to be upset because someone has insulted, insulted you, right? So I understand that part of it. But you're the one who's insulted. So this is your problem, not what they said to you. And if you're going to be insulted here, you're going to be insulted again. And you're not the one who's upset, and you're the one who's suffering from it. Because I can't stop their mouth, and I can't stop them from saying what they say. If it's this person, if today is this person, tomorrow is someone else, or, or another situation is going to happen that I get some kind of message, either it's directly or indirectly, or some kind of behavior of someone that's going to be upsetting me, that, and that sort of thing. So I, I need to bring my attention away from them and put it on myself because this thing is happening to me on a regular basis. And as a result of that, I'm the one who suffers from it. So how do I overcome this? How do I become the master? 
that I crave to be? How do I come to peace within myself? And that is to look at the source of this emotion. What's triggering it? Okay, what triggered it? You look at that. You look at what's triggering it. And it's process that it's rising. And next time, when it happens again, you're already starting to get yourself prepared for it. You're working on yourself. So the next time, which is going to be a next time, there's always another time. Trust me on that one. Something happens, someone insults you or a situation that triggers you, whatever it is. Again, it doesn't have to be a direct thing to you. It could be about anything. You're, you're angry because of something happens in the world or in your town or your surrounding or they're doing construction next door to your home and they're making a lot of noise and then it's going on for six months and then the construction stops and then they're they're remodeling another home next to your place so the construction starts again and you're hearing the noise of the drill in the morning drilling or they're banging in a wall breaking walls and you're hearing all this noise so it ha doesn't have to be something straight to you directly somebody says something to you it's not that is just something that is triggering you. So now you bring your attention there to see where it comes from. And you watch it. You simply watch it. And in this method of obs observing and being fully alert and aware that this thing is coming and is really taking over your body, you know? In, and in the beginning, you may not have any control and you react like always you do. But slowly, what happens is you start to break the old conditioning. You start begin to break your conditioning and to bring more awareness to it and to stay with it, to stay in your center with this storm that is building up inside you, you stay with it. Again, listen, pay attention to this part. I'm not talking about repressing your emotion. I'm not talking about denying, which we've done that in our lives, not denying your emotion. And I'm not saying not, fe not even feel it. I'm not saying don't feel it. You feel it, of course, because it's bigger than you. What I'm saying is you break the pattern from being unconscious about it and bringing consciousness to it. Now you're bringing, actively, you're bringing awareness to it. You are aware of the rise of this anger inside you. You're aware of it. And you're simply, you're doing your best to watch it to the best of your ability to its rise. And as you master this, you will see this rises inside you and then it just falls, falls back. It goes back to where it came from. And as you do this regularly, it gets into your system, means you are, have implemented an old conditioning, you have replaced it, you've broken the chain of the reaction and now awareness has come in. So it starts to go into different areas. Like if you're, let's say, for example, let me use this. You're impatient. You have, I have a friend of mine that is extremely impatient. And when, whenever, I don't, I, don't, I don't like him to drive 
his car when I go places with him I want to drive because he gets super impatient or if we go to a restaurant as soon as we eat now he has to get up and run so a lot of times when I go somewhere ahead of time I make an agreement I said I'm only gonna go to this place with you that at the end you don't get up and want to run I want to digest my food I can't just get up and run or we take our own vehicles and you can get up and leave if you want but I need to take some time I don't want to just shove the food in my mouth and run out the door so you want to just check this out with yourself as well that this extreme impatience is coming through you and you just stay with it so you use this as your friend is your friend is teaching you how to remain the observer and simply using this unwanted emotion using it as an advantage as a friend to help you and give you an opportunity to stay the observer and to stay the center and to see it that it's rising and it's falling but it has no power over you it can't touch the truth of who you are it's just another thought it's just another emotion and this thought or this emotion is affecting the idea of who you think you are, but not affecting who you really are. It's affecting that. It's affecting the ego. It's affecting a false imaginary sense of who you really are but not who you are, really. No, I haven't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it right now. Okay. So, yeah, so I have a question here. I'm just gonna read it. Uh, my curiosity and question is, how does one reach that place where we realize what we truly are? What would be that feeling state or imagine look like okay that's that's a good question thank you for asking this question I I can unmute you if you want to talk to me directly you're unmuted okay. hi everyone so um so this is really my question um, I hope you probably can dive into it a little bit I I understand what you're you're saying but um, I'd, I'd want to get maybe like just to clear it from the, the physical plane then, just to get the temporal understanding of what that, what that awareness would feel and look like. Right. Just to, to know that you are at that place, because we're, I guess we're, I know that we are playing different roles and we're, we're seeing things from different angles uh, based on our experiences. So uh, my curiosity is just when is it that we know that we are at that place? Because we have been conditioned over the years to experience right. a whole lot of different things. So it's, how do you know that this is true and right. this is what it is and this is where I stay? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I, I understand. The, um, any moment that you don't think, there's no thoughts. So you're simply here and there's no stream of thoughts happening in your mind is you are there in that moment. That's what it feels like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, you've, 
you've experienced it many, many times in your life. You tap into it all the time. Mm -hmm. But your it's mind... It's short while, though, right? Huh? I guess it's always probably just for a short while. That part of it that you're referring to up to now, maybe there's moments. Moments that like you're there and there's no thoughts and you're completely content. You tap into it all the time. But your mind... Huh. I don't know. What happened. Okay. Right. So you... Th that's that place you're referring to okay it's always here you're always in it mm -hmm. and it's not a place it's not somewhere else and it's not a um all it just requires is is simply not thinking being quiet inside and then you're, you're one with it. Then the mind comes and says, I'm wondering what this thing is like. <laughs> or I'm wondering when I get to it, when I get there, how I would be feeling. So the mind is projecting it on another time outside of now. Because it's something you need to get to. So it means it's not here right now. Correct? Right. Well, that thing is here. And it's never any, in any other time. It's always here. So in the absence of the mind and questioning, what it questions is that. Okay. So once you start to recognize it, then my my mission my work is simply to help you recognize that place which is already here within yourself and the more you start to notice it bringing your attention to it the more you realize that big chunks of the day you're you're swimming in it and it takes over it starts to take over your life. So what happens is the more you notice it, the more you become quiet and you're hanging out in this place. It's very, very simple. Very, very simple. Because again, the mind is expecting a big bang. The, the mind is projecting on what we're talking about as an extraordinary event that we've heard or maybe you have experienced but the mind is projecting that this thing is super amazing and big and it's outside of right now so its job is not to let you figure it out that is here so it wants to take you out now, once you get away from the mind and your attentions come within and you're just hanging out in this moment, you're quiet and nothing's going on. And then comes this subtle, subtle, constant state of bliss, but it's very subtle. It can just burst, but once you recognize it, it's constantly there. There's these bubbles of bliss pops up. You don't know, all of a sudden you start laughing. You don't know, all of a sudden you're just feeling like, wow, all is really well. I don't really have a problem. This feeling comes that Life is exactly, life is perfect with all the screwed up stuff that you observe. You start to see like, oh, it's all happening in perfection and there's nothing wrong. 
But it all go ahead. There, there was a part two to my question. Though. I get, um, I totally understand, and I appreciate you um, for responding. Uh, so, not from, don't I'm not looking at it from the point of being the observer. Say you are the actual person who's in a position of say some physical infliction of pain okay or how how does one relate to it if you're in that position where you're being afflicted by pain physically how right. do you transcend that into this space <laughs> right exactly well the pain let's say i'm i'm in pain physically so am i in pain physically every moment of my life uh, i'm gonna have to mute everybody for just a moment mm -hmm. you guys yeah am i in pain every moment in my life or pain comes and goes and even if i'm in pain all the time pain is always happening in now in this moment so and the body is our bodies are designed they're going to get older they're going to get uglier they're going to deteriorate and ultimately the body is going to die and that's a very natural process of third dimension so it's a given now, understanding this part of it and admitting this part of it comes to this one question you're asking me that, okay, here's somebody is in pain all the time. And how does this awareness and this teaching will help with constant pain? Now, the constant pain, it's, I now if I'm really here in this moment I'm only here in this moment now the story most people bring a story with them that of their pain whatever that is there's a story coming with it it's like a compartments of a train attached to this is coming to now but in now I can experience pain without the story. There's no story, I just something's hurting right now. But I don't have a story attached to it. And when I just come into this moment that I'm having pain in this moment, and I don't have a story with it, no matter what that is. It could be like 20 years, 15 years of a back pain issue, that it's been constant, I understand, but in the moment, in this fresh moment that is only here, it's brand new. It doesn't have a story, it's just an experience of pain in this moment, in my body. So, when you switch, and you bring the awareness to it, the awareness is fully aware that there is in this moment, an experience of pain is happening, but there is, there is no past to it. And also there is no future to it. So there's no guarantee it's going to be like that. And there is no story from it that it's been happening for years. It's simply right now. And in that, it's interesting that a solution will appear whatever that solution is whether you pick up some medication or the pain disappears or it shifts to something else but when you're just fully present in this moment with it and you're not in either places all of a sudden something shifts because there is no longer this story that the mind has created of poor me, 
or I'm in pain, or there's no solution for me, and I've been going through this thing, and I've seen everyone on the planet, and no one can help me, is just simply an expression, an experience of pain in that moment, but it's not related to, to you. You're simply aware of a, an, an expression of pain happening, but you don't have a story. It's not something happening to you. So in that shift, you become free from it, even though the body is experiencing the pain, but it's not affecting you. Okay. So the body is experiencing the pain, yeah, but not the, the, observer, not the observer. The, the body is experiencing the pain in that moment. And also the body experiences no pain in the moment. You know, the body goes through different stages, sometimes experiencing it, sometimes not experiencing it. It affects the nervous system, but you become free from it. Because you start to realize it has no power over who you are. It doesn't matter how much pain it goes through. It doesn't touch your ability to observe it. It doesn't touch your ability to be aware of it. It can increase or decrease, but your sense of I am, your sense of presence does not get affected by it. So, and if you keep your attention on the sense of I am, instead of I am the body and I'm suffering, you bring your attention on this place, then a disconnection happens. Does it Thank make you. any? You're welcome. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm just um, trying to get a, a physical look at it to say that um, from my understanding of what you're, you just explained is like the, the body would be that um, third dimensional um, way of which the universe, I guess, is expressing itself. And fifth dimension would be like the engine or the fuel, the observer then. So it's really not that, that I am not the body, but I'm really the observer in it. And yes. so whatever is happening to it, it's not happening to me. It's like controlling this thing from a remote location. Yes, it's because what is happening to it even though your nervous system is, is affected, you know, you, you, there's nothing you can do not to feel it. If I have some pain, I can't deny it's not there. I'm aware of it. But does it affect my awareness? Do, do I, am I going through periods of day that I'm no longer aware? My awareness remains the awareness. The sense of being, the sense that I have that I am, without any stories, doesn't go away. It stays the sense, the, the presence of I am. So which one am I here? Am I the I am or I am the body? So, in fact, you use this, you turn this unfortunate or negative or, or um, poison, poisonous situation, you know, into medicine. You switch it. You use this pain as your teacher to come back inside to this place. And as this shift begin to happen, then you're gonna see the magic takes place. Something will shift. I don't wanna say what, but you're gonna see a new a quality of life. Something presents in your life that wasn't there before. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for, thanks for asking your question.
Hi, Tommy. Where, where are you from? Where are you watching us from? Yeah, I'm watching from Trondheim, Norway. Okay, Trondheim. Hi, it's yeah. Trondheim. Uh, I, I, Trondheim is uh, a bit snowy uh, at the moment. Snowy Spring and... Spring right. is late. <laughs> right. I haven't been there for a couple of years. I've been in Trondheim a bunch of times. I've, I've done workshops there. Yeah, I'm going, coming to uh, Hamar. Oh, great. I look forward yeah. to seeing you. Why yeah, I'm look, looking forward to seeing you too. Great. We'll, we'll have a good time then. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, feel free if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. Yeah, I'm still a bit new to this, so I'm uh, listening mostly. Right, yeah. right. How did you find out about this? Uh, by Trina. Okay, all right. Our sister's Trina. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you're both coming together then. Yeah. Great, beautiful. Happy to mm. hear that. Hi, Trina. I'm just, I see you there. Are you, are you feeling? Oh, okay. Yeah, good. Better. Yeah. Yes, I'm better. Uh, the kidney is working just fine, and all the samples taken is fine, and everything's good. Well, thank God. Yes. Go kidney. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to hear that. It um, brings yeah. a lot of joy to my heart. It is six months to the Mine too. <laughs> yeah, great. Hi, Marie. Marie, Marie Kato. Nice seeing you. Nice Welcome seeing back. You. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> How are we doing with time? My, my phone is blocking yeah, the time. Away, so okay. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, I. I decided to uh, add the meditation back, but we're just keeping it at 15 minutes. So, so uh, we start at 10 to 11:15. So I think this is a happy medium, keeps keeps everyone happy. And uh, I was doing the events for an hour and a half before, so we had half an hour of meditation and then an hour of talk and. Uh, question answers but then I cut out the meditation and we went to one hour and um, which was an experiment to see how it works and uh, I, I guess adding adding the meditation to it is better uh, those of you who are in a favor of the meditation raise your hand I just want to make sure that um, okay so we're we're all in it together Okay, good. Happy to hear that. Hi, Anne Marie. Hi, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> and where are you watching us from? From Denmark. Denmark. Where? Yes. Where in Denmark? Uh, in a little bit north of Copenhagen, uh, Gentop. Okay. All yes. right. I have been uh, seeing you in uh, Østerbro, Helen. Uh, you went there uh, for one and a half year, I think. Right. Is that the expo? You is that an expo? No, you know, you know, Dan Info, uh, the the mess, the what, uh, what's it called in English? Messa, the expo. No. Yes, you went to a mess to right. uh, some workshops in there. I'm a mess. <laughs> no, no, no. What's it called? I don't know what's called in, in you know. Ah, um, uh, no, no, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> <I'm a mess. laughs> in my fault. <laughs> wow. Oh, you know, in in Copenhagen, you were right. here for one two years ago. Right. Yeah, two yeah. years ago. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh. 
Well, welcome back. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, great. So uh, we're going to be doing the next academy uh, next Tuesday at the same time. And keep in mind that we also record the event. And those of you who join us from the Zoom, uh, you get a copy of it. So we'll send it to you. Also, um, same academy minus the meditation is on my Facebook page. So you can find it there too. And it goes on my YouTube page. So in case if you feel like you want to go back and rewind the tape, and uh, listen to this again. Um, for those of you who are in California, in Southern California, I still have a series of uh, talks, the 5D Quantum Awareness Talk Series that continue. I'm offering them for free every Wednesday here in Los Angeles at Gateway, the portal on Venice Boulevard. And every Thursday at, in Long Beach at a place called the Healing Key uh, Center. So both events, both evenings, 5D Quantum Awareness Talk Series, they're free. You're welcome to join in from 7.30 to 9.30 in the evening. I'm also, uh, I will be heading to Norway. Uh, oh, I have two more uh, events here in Los Angeles. I have the five fifth dimensional quantum healing training program uh, which is is the healing modality that i teach and that's going to be on uh, the april 13th and 14th here in los angeles as well as a one-day workshop in long beach which is going to be about return to love that's the title of the workshop discover your inner peace i believe i'm i'm giving the same workshop in hamar is that right uh hilde return yes, to love right. yeah right i have i have so many things going on right now that i i forget forgive me if i'm asking about the title of my own workshop because i, I have about like 30 different events coming so sometimes i forget where i'm doing what so I need a little reminder. Um, we'll, we'll be heading to Norway on 22nd of April, and I'll be in Hamar for one week. After that, we, I'm offering a few events in Stockholm. There's going to be two free events and a paid workshop in Stockholm. Um, I'm going to be putting it up on my website soon. Uh, what are we doing after that? Okay, one week in Gothenburg. For those of you who are close by or you know any friends want to come to my events in uh, Gothenburg. Uh, then one week in Warsaw, a week in Frankfurt, and, and a week in Paris, France. Um, at the beginning of July, from July 1st to 11th, I'm doing my signature uh, healing training program that's my signature workshop in the middle of Sweden in the mountains in a place called Ore and it's a very high vibrational area and those of you who've been with me you you know how powerful and transformative it is and those of you who are interested to get information about it if you you can contact Pia uh, or Anneli on my website or you can contact us and talk to Shishi and we'll get your information. Uh, we're gonna be in Ore for 10, uh, 11 days and 10 nights. Um, hold on a second. Uh, Rosalie, you have a question? Yeah, I just wonder what time you're coming with it all the book. What's that? That book you should write. Oh, my second book. Have you it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second book, actually, as I, I finished it, I have, to, I have to finish the editing. And it's halfway done. Right. Okay, because I like to have it. 
You know, I tell you what, if next time, <laughs> let's put a deadline on this and hold me to it. How about if we put the deadline for the second book, we say by October 1st, 2019, I put it out. How's that? I make a commitment online that the second book will be out ready by October 1st, 2019. How's that? Yeah, I have to send a Shishi a chain then so she can lock you up to, to finish the book. I know. I mean, every day when I come here, she has a stick in her hand and she wants to spank me because, because I've been a bad boy and I haven't done my homework. So, <laughs> so I have He's to get, I got to <laughs> I'll get it done. I'll get it done. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, very nice seeing you all. Sending you lots of love and light. And uh, again, one last message. Come, come back to the center. <clears throat> Ignore your mind ignore the thoughts and if you're really looking for freedom you have to ignore the events in the world as well because what they do it just stimulates your mind that's what it does if you want freedom you have to go to this place that you disengage from everything I know it sounds kind of funny, but the world that you're really involved with is an animation of the collective mind. Our collective mind has created this world. So it's crazy and all the things happening in it, but it's what's happening inside yourself. That's why you're seeing it. And it's affecting you. It's really, really mirroring a crazy mind. That's what it does. So, if you become quiet within and you become still, I'm not saying that the world is going to disappear and it becomes non existing, but it loses its effect on you. And and you change your vibrations. Your vibrations will change to a higher frequency. And in that change, as your frequency changes, the world that you're perceiving hostile, the life that you think it's, it's cruel, you start to find life very sweet. It changes. You find life is actually very accommodating because your mind is no longer there to say this sucks it shouldn't be like this it should be like that you simply fall into the be and you are here you're aware you're still breathing you're still having a drink you're still eating your food but your mind doesn't go anywhere you're simply here because you have discovered the, the now, that life only happens here in now. And then the magic takes over. Really, the li your life really begins from this moment on and it takes over. And you start to see how perfectly everything is synchronized. And your anxiety, your judgment, your anger, your fear, everything will disappear. So, but it all happens with one movement. And that is bringing your attention to the center of yourself. And then everything changes. It's not very, very difficult. You can do it. And if you're hearing these words, is something inside you recognizes freedom. That's why we're here together. This is 
very easy to do because you've tried everything else and it doesn't work and that's why we're here so what do i have to lose to try this nothing i have nothing to lose if i try this you try it and you stay with it and then see what happens namaste